people are not getting what they need. To my mind, that could lead to some people committing suicide because they can't feed their kids, their worries, they can't pay their rent. They don't always get the help that they need. But this is a particularly good project because it's the basics in life which we all need to live. And, and the girls have done this off their own back and my, I've got, I'm full of ad, admiration for them. We should never have had to start this in the first place. Their children sense that their mothers are unhappy because if you can't provide, and I've no doubt some mothers are going without food. And that, in this day and age, that's a disgrace. These were more always bring what you can, take what you need. And it's grown their arms and legs. Every week we get big deliveries for individuals and different projects as well have brought stuff down. So we've had uh, stuff for the uh, Castle Milk Youth Complex, Castle and Housing, Arden Glen uh, Housing. Uh, every week Sarah comes down, we, Sarah for Castle Milk Parish Church comes down with uh, bread and cakes that she picks up from Marks and Spencers. And that's a great wee day for us. It cheers us up and we're able to make up bags and take it round the quad and share it out. But one of the good things about it is really lifted your spirits, but it's also helped us get to know our neighbours because a lot of people just sit in the house and uh, full of despair and worry. And I think that that's this, the fact that we're out visible, people know we're here. We've been able to sort of signpost people to the law centre to get their benefits sort of looked over and everything else. So it's been amazing for that and it's something that we really want to continue and, and, and have that kind of spirit. It's no charity, we're no here as a food bank. We're here showing love and solidarity. That's what we always say, giving me love and solidarity because we think in these times it's really needed. I mean, the amount of suicides that have happened in Castle is is scary and the despair that people feel is, is something that's driving this forward as well because we want people to know that they're not alone. Well, it's necessary because, firstly, we're stuck in the house, we can't get out, but also the impact of the social policies that have, the, the impact on the, the dismantling, really, of the welfare state has is, is left people really struggling. I mean, even a, if you have to apply for university, people say, oh, there's so many people in universal credit, but to apply for that, you have to jump through all the different hoops to get it, and it takes you weeks for you to get some stability. And we also know that within a second things change for people, and because we've witnessed it over the, the, the couple of months that we've been out, people who have been able to help and put things in, to all of a sudden have their circumstances changed within a day, and they're, they're, they've got nothing. Um, so there's all there's all kinds of ways that things arrive here. Sometimes people just bring what they've got, something surplus in their shopping trolley, or they, they plan to bring stuff. Um, other things are coming from shops delivery. So one of the things I'm involved in is helping bring um, Marks and Spencer surplus bakery foods, and I've been doing that for a few months now. And um, it, it, I wonder if Marks and Spencers even have a clue how much um, their bread and cakes mean to people. People come to help themselves. We keep it open late because people are embarrassed. They don't want to be seen to be going to. It's not a food bank, that's solidarity. It's no charity, it's solidarity. The nursery's been phoning us up. Everybody all just seems to be involved and it's just, it's just really took off. At Facebook, everybody's all talking about it. It's a great thing, it's a great thing. And what I would like to see is for this to happen in other schemes. Well, it was dead simple. Cathy came up with the idea because we already do care and share up at the shopping centre once a year during the summer. And she gave Margaret and I a wee call and before we knew it, we got the donations and we, we had money to make the pots, of, you know, the big pots of soup. And it's just, what can I say? It's just been overwhelming. We've just had Mammy's coming down with kids. We've had Mammy's messaging us because they're embarrassed and they say can they come down at seven o'clock, you know, things like that. Man, see the way everybody's talking about it, see the way we stop and say hello. See, see, just, see the COVID, you're locked in your house, you can't get out, you don't talk to people, the depression all starts. I suffer from depression. I'm no good at going out or anything like that. This has helped me immensely.
the fact that they can't go out to play, I'm quite sure, I have no hesitation in saying that a lot of them have big mental health problems. And our mental health services are already, were overwhelmed before the COVID started. That really disturbs me, it worries me. That, that's one of the things that, I mean, some people thought, oh, that would be vandalised, and it hasn't, because everybody recognises the, the kind of importance of it and the need for it. The local school, the primary school, we have a... Had, we've, we've, they've sent out a bulletin letting the parents know that this exists as well and to come because they recognise that a lot of families are struggling as well. So, so that I think that's one of the message, really important messages to get out there is to get people to stone up for themselves and say, no, I'm worth more than this and we should have a say in how things are run. There's an assumption that folk have access to enough in the household, whether that's electricity, whether that's a cam space to work, whether that's um, equipment. And I think folk have been keen to provide equipment, but they've not necessarily been able to do things like provide heat and warmth for families to have. And so I think there'll be lots of children that will be struggling in themselves with their own mental health just from the, the changes and challenges they've had to face. I think on the whole my experience of schools is that teachers are great and teachers really want to support families. I think when you meet that with households who've had multiple traumas that becomes a really difficult job to do as well as teaching. And so I think there's just a, there's a sense of people trying to do a lot um, and, and doing the basic job of education often becomes a challenge when there's so many other obstacles to, to contend with if that's to do with folk, children being hungry, um, it means they can't learn well. And I think things like this are making those um, changes possible for teachers to get a chance at doing teaching. The nurseries involved, the schools have all got the posters up to do with the love and solidarity. We get fresh fruit, apples, oranges, bananas, everything. The kids just recently have been able to get a wee bit of fruit from us because we've been keeping it here to the, to the shopping. Oh, the school's been great. Like so when the school was shut there, they were bringing in like cereal to help out a lot of families and bringing like wee cartons of milk and like juice and flavoured water. They've been brilliant.